As you can probably see, I am currently suffering through something I would like to call a worst case scenario. Now why is it called a worst case scenario? Can you tell? I've created a list compiling all my knowledge on how to avoid and how you can tell what is a worst case scenario. But before we do that, we gotta understand how I have created this list, because this wasn't written in the bible. All countries in this game is divided into tiers, from 1 to 7, 1 being a microstate and 7 being a superpower. Your tier is determined by your military and economic power. There is the tier you start with, and the tier you gain as you get stronger. And if you're interested in which country is which tier, you can always check their wiki. Considering all of this, I would call a situation where you have the same tier as your starting one and is currently suffering, a early game worst case scenario. Then there's the middle game worst case scenario, whereas you've achieved a higher tier by conquering other nations. Here, you are more prone to unrest and time has passed, meaning that the world is getting more unpredictable. And I'm gonna ignore the end game one since like, the only problem you'll be having is war exhaustion or stability. And I'm also realizing now that everything is just time but with extra steps. I think it's important that we start with the problems you can't really affect. Geographical and the infamous bad neighbor problem. Basically, basic worst case scenarios that depends on which tier of a country you are. Basically, you're screwed! To make this more informing I've decided to remove things like USA attacking a tier with one country. Because the probability of that happening is like basically none, except under certain circumstances. And even then, you don't lose that much. Like why would you continue playing if the USA is attacking you as the Maldives? It's just annoying. Tier 1 countries only have one worst case scenario, which is being a country necessary for another country to form a formable. But luckily for you, it's very easy to avoid this. Don't be a complete dick! There's also the scenario of your country burning to death, but how does that even happen? I feel like you gotta make a conscious decision to burn your own city. Tier 2 countries, on the other hand, can be a hit or miss. For a majority of formables, you will require a tier 2 country, so I would classify it as a worst case scenario. Since there's basically no way you can defend yourself as Equatorial Guinea against Spain. There's really only one way to survive this as a tier 2 country, and that is being a god at naval warfare and abusing tanks to get an early head start. But even then, it's hard to avoid an angry regional power. You could always bribe them with a pen. I know, this has seen better days. But it's a fucking pen. Tier 3 countries have a few more options, which also means more options leading to certain death. But hey, we're still alive. There's the problems I already mentioned, but that only applies to conquerors, aka countries that have gained that tier by taking over other countries, aka I will call these countries Rised Tier Nations. And you can probably guess that I can't name things. And you would be absolutely correct! Which is also quite sad. Rised tier 3 nations are basically screwed, because at the middle game, which is around 2025, you would be fighting against big empires, and you're basically screwed with no way to escape other than to use naval, which is gonna get destroyed by the Royal Navy. But you could always try getting an alliance with USA, you fucking co- Preset tier 3 nations on the other hand can quickly gain an advantage and stand toe to toe with tier 5 nations in the early game, by abusing tanks and the mass attack strat. You'll basically want to become an all-out conqueror and take out all your weak neighbors and call nice strong AI nations. That will however lead you to getting some unrest and war exhaustion, so I would 100% recommend getting nationalism than fascism, as fast as you can since they're just broken for aggressive nations. And they give a 1-2% to stability boost so you can keep conquering. I've decided to group up tier 4 and tier 5 nations for the simple fact that there's basically zero differences in their worst case scenarios. And I have realized that I've said that worst case scenarios way too many times, but I ain't gonna stop. Rised tier 4 and 5 nations worst case scenarios is that you own a small country that a superpower needs to form. Now you could always try to defend it or cede it to the superpower, but you're probably gonna get attacked by it, so don't make it stronger. Everyone in this game is ruthless dictators, except the occasional Switzerland. So I would recommend gathering all your manpower and attacking them quickly, if we are neighbors, and if it's a country that likes colonization, I will just pray that he doesn't have a strong navy. Preset tier 4 and 5 nations have even worse problems. Sure, you can play like me and conquer the entirety of Europe before 2025 as Germany, but not to be rude or anything. But you gotta be good at the game. And to be good at the game means that you gotta be quick on your fingers. Because as I've always said and will always say, speed is the most important factor of rise of nations. The faster you are at conquering, the stronger you get much faster. Preset tier 6 and 7 nations really only have one basic worst case scenario and that is being attacked and getting your land scorched, but even that is so unlikely, you're probably gonna get stronger through time, and the only starting tier 6 countries that is exposed to danger is Mexico getting attacked by USA, 
and Russia getting attacked by China. But if Mexico and Russia are both players, you're probably gonna basically shoot yourself in the foot. They can defend themselves pretty easily with their terrain. I mean, it's fucking Russia. Ever heard of something called Winter? Rise to tier 6 and 7 nations have the same problems as the presets ones, but also getting way too much war exhaustion from conquering. And these are only the basic worst case scenarios. What about the universal ones? And the most popular early game worst case scenario goes to... The Coalition one! What do I mean by that? Well, someone is just casually playing a country like Austria, and oopsie daisy, it seems that all European powers have created a big alliance. Oh, and the USA has created a faction, and oh, China has also created a faction to counter those factions countering that faction. What the fuck? This scenario is just annoying. There's literally no way for you to expand without upsetting anyone, so you really only have one option, and that is going to Africa and conquering some stuff there, but you've already failed at that point. If you see the potential of a faction forming, start invading early, and start invading literally anything you fucking touch. This is to ensure that the faction doesn't get stronger than it already is, or can get. Because the weaker the faction is, the easier it is to destroy it. I mean, it's like basic knowledge. That is really the only way you could possibly survive and get a monopoly on an entire continent. Faction problems are one thing, but what about the role playing people? Someone is just casually playing Germany, like me, invading Austria and Czechia, then when they attack Poland, all hell breaks loose. USA for some reason starts speaking like an edgy anime teen and saying things like Looks like Europe needs some liberation. And things like Oh, Germany is repeating World War 2. Like, no. I just don't want to attack France at the beginning. Because it's just not a good idea. And attacking more of the Eastern Europe will upset Russia. But don't worry. These things are very easy to avoid, because the so-called role players are pretty bad at the game. They just spam troops and are mostly beginners. So of course, like usual, use submarines and attackers on troops crossing the waters, because attackers deal substantially more damage on troops in water. Now, if they're on the same continent as you, ju just use an aircraft carrier or spam tanks, or capital snipe, whatever. Everything works. It's a free-for-all. Now the most annoying and the problem people suffer during or after big wars is a high war exhaustion, low stability and basically no money. But this is such an easy thing to overcome. Sure, you could always release everything and wait it out, but you've basically lost by then. So what you should do is make preparations so that doesn't happen in the first place. Get as many electronic factories at the beginning as you can and sell it to AI countries. Get civilian factories and increase taxes to max later on. That will solve your future money problems. The war exhaustion and the low stability one is also easy as that. Just get fascism as soon, soon as you can and get its exclusive policy reducing the unrest achieved. And then keeping your stability over 50% is as easy as justifying on small AI countries, declaring and then white piecing. You basically get free stability this way and if you have fascism you get a plus 2 stab per declaration. Which is quite dumb but I love it so much. But probably the biggest offender and hardest thing to survive is someone having the title Grandmaster.